right, folks, welcome back. Today we're gonna get started back on the, uh, what are we working on? Golly, tot. Uh, we're gonna work on the Arco today. So it's gonna, we're gonna take it slow and easy. Uh, you see here in the background, this here building. See if I got some before and after pictures. I got some before and after pictures in a small video. But anyway, this is a, uh, check this out. This right here is what I've been working on here lately. It's been killing me. It's 500 degrees outside. I uh, got this thing all like pressure washed, redid some trim on it. I uh, got to throw a special shout out to a good buddy of mine, Chad. He's a uh, mechanic guy right down the road, got his own business, and uh, we're always swapping around BS. And he stopped by one day and said, Hey, man, I know you're in the market for a building. And I was like, Yeah, I am. I need a building for a paint booth so I can do painting in it and whatever. So, uh, special thanks to him. He actually hooked it up, brung it over on his trailer. I followed him over on his tractor and we got it all slid off, moved around, got it leveled up. But uh, yeah, it wasn't too fancy in the beginning, but hey, now she's uh, pretty good. Don't laugh at the color because, uh, yeah, I really don't like it, but I don't care. It's I'm just going to paint in it, powder coat in it, so whatever. But uh, you got the roof done. I went in and put a new roof. There's a spot on the top and the back side where uh, a tree branch had like, rubbed on it. So I was like, nah, shingles ain't that much. Uh, you know let's just do it right the first time that way I ain't got to worry about it so anyway I put some trim on it blah 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 fix this that and other let's do this latch up here oh man and I just do some white paint on the inside oh son I need to open the windows but anyway this is a uh, I'm gonna run me some power in here but uh it's like a uh, eight and a half by 13 just right it'll be fine but uh, I got enough to do. I can put a filter on one window, the exhaust fan there. So, winter time comes, I put me a small heater in here. I ain't got to worry about rain and the wind and everything else and the bugs getting in paint. So, uh, I don't know if my paint rack's going to fit in here or not. If not, I'm going to jury rig me something up and make it work. But, uh, yeah, not too bad. So, this is what I've been working on. My new paint powder coat booth. So, and then uh, some of it's probably going to be used for storage. Probably really put me some shelves up. It had some in the corner, but I took them all down. But anyway, so that's what I've been working on. And throw a little white paint on the inside to make it a little bit brighter. But anyway, so anyway, like I said, special thanks to my buddy Chet. Greatly appreciate it, man. I know you watch the videos when you have a chance and uh, worked out great. Anyway, let's go in here in this hot box. Woo, it got dark like a roller coaster ride coming out of a tunnel. Man, it's hot in here. And I've had the doors open for a while. Got the fan going, that's why it's kind of noisy. Let's see, let me swing this around. Got your little RCF action. Anyway, what is the temp? Yeah, way too hot. Sun. Anyway, make sure to stay hydrated. But anyway, let me uh, show you where we're at on this here um, Arco. I got the fan going. Wife's well, gonna have to edit that noise out because I ain't turning off the fan today. It's too hot. I even got the lights off in here, ain't? I ain't even got the lights on. I'm trying to save on electricity bill. But anyway, uh, I'll turn them on here in a second. That way I can see what I'm doing. But uh, I got us a stage one kit here from Go Power Sports. We're gonna get the uh, carburetor jetted, get that done. And then uh, I think what we're gonna do before we start working on the bike, I got it all right over there on the, on the table. Everything's good and dry, it's been dry. It's been cooking out in the shop for uh, about a week now since I've been working on the building. But anyway, I got all the stuff powder coated. I think I showed you all that, I do believe. But anyway, what we're gonna try to do today is uh, got the motor bagged up, kept it from getting dusty and dirty like everything else is. But uh, the goal today is to get the motor over here and get the motor all buttoned up, valve cover, side cover, fan shroud, all that good stuff. And that way I can sit that to the side and then get the bike up here. So I'm gonna grab a few more tools, turn the lights on, get hydrated, and uh, let's get the motor put together. All right, let's open up this uh, stage one kit. Let's set this carburetor over out of the way. Yeah, stage one pack, uh, BLU. I bet it's got a blue air filter in it. Let's take a look at it and see. Now, when you open it up, usually they tape all your stuff right here to the side. Uh, so I have a razor blade. Don't have one. Ah. Got one. All right, let's take this right here and cut right down the side of this tape line. Pull this back, blue there. Oh, dropped it. 
There's your little bag with uh, your gaskets in it. So we're gonna lay this to the side. And then here's your uh, your jet. So I'm gonna cut this off, that way I can keep it all in the bag, don't lose it. Don't wanna lose that. That would be your uh, carburetor jet. Lay that over there. Air filter, it says it's blue. Blah! It's blue, nice. All right, let's set this over here to the side. And the rest of the package, there's a Go Power Sports sock. I like to put these on all the bikes. Got them on both bikes over there in the floor. It's a little added protection. So what I'm gonna do is I'll put this in here with the filter so it don't blow off. Cause I got the fan going. And the last thing that's in your uh, package is gonna be your adapter. This is the hardware for it. You got a little screw inside here. So you don't wanna lose that. I think it's got like a eight millimeter head on it. And this is gonna be your uh, choke hold down. And you have the adapter, pretty blue one, that's gonna go on to accept the big air filter. So put that back in here, close this box up and we'll set that to the side. Put this bag over here somewhere. All right, so we're gonna take this here to carburetor. And since I already have it off, we're just gonna remove the bottom uh, bowl, which is a 10 millimeter. I'm gonna lay this down here. I'm gonna pop the bowl off. Make sure you don't use, lose the little uh, seal that goes on the bottom. I usually turn this a little bit, break the seal loose, and a lot of times that'll keep the gasket inside the carburetor instead of coming off with the bowl. Because if you got this on the bike trying to do it, trying to get your bowl gasket back in where it's supposed to be, it's kind of hard to kind of hard to do because all it wants to do is fall out. But since I have it off, we're just gonna do it this way. And we'll take a good flat tip. This is a screwdriver I'll ground down. It's a good flat tip to get down inside the jet. And you don't wanna mess the threads up there on the side. So I just turned it in there if I could see what I'm doing. And this screwdriver might be a little too wide. I have to go get my other one. Yep. I'm gonna go grab the other screwdriver. Oh, this is too, the wrong one. All right, now I got the right screwdriver. Make sure it's clean. We're just gonna line it up inside there. Where are we at? There we go. Mm, break it loose. Now, sometimes when you're doing this, your emulsion tube or E-tube will fall out. No big deal. Cause then you can just put it right back in. Come on, do this on camera and it takes you forever. Oh, this is your emulsion tube, actually fell out, and the jet that we're actually replacing. So, you have a big end and a small narrow end on your emulsion tube. The small end always goes up inside the carburetor first because this is what's gonna protrude through the carburetor if you look down through the main, main body of the carburetor. So, we'll just take the small end, slide it back in there, let that sit right there. The one come over to the back get the supplied jet that they uh, sent us with the stage one. I'm gonna set this to the side. Come on, there we go. Just like so, we'll drop that rascal right in there. Line my screwdriver up if I can see it, there we go. Now you ain't gotta get it crazy tight, but you'd make sure you wanna get a little snug and you don't wanna over tighten it because it is brass into aluminum. That's it, just give it a good snug. Put my bowl back on. When I put my bowl on, I figure out where this is gonna sit in relation on the motor as to where your drain is. If you wanna have your drain kick to the backside, because if you got it turned around like so, you're not gonna be able to get to it. So if I'm sitting on the carburetor, sitting on the engine like so, you're gonna be able to access if you got it turned basically to the backside of the bike. That's where I put it. Make sure your uh, seal or your gasket's still on your bolt for your drain plug for your bowl, the main one on the bottom. Make sure it's all the way in the groove, which it is. And we'll just tighten it up. You ain't gotta get crazy with it. It's good and snug. That's it. That's how you change your jet. All right, I'm gonna move some stuff around. We're gonna put this jet back in the bag and I'm gonna mark it as a stock jet. And uh, that way, if I need a stock jet for anything, then I'll already have one that's actually marked. I'll just put it on there with a Sharpie marker. All right, let me move some stuff around and we'll start putting this motor together. 
All right, let's go ahead and get the uh, valve cover put back on. I went ahead and put the push rods back in the motor. And since I didn't take the head or anything off, didn't mess with anything else, I just pulled the governor out. Since I did remove the cam, uh, put it back in. Um, I did go ahead and double check the valve clearance, which every should, nothing should have moved and everything was totally fine on it. But I had it apart, figured might as well check it anyway while, while I got it apart. But uh, pulled the valve cover off to get it powder coated. Gasket was still good because the motor was new. So we're gonna uh, use it. Could have copper coated it, but uh, I think it'd be fine. Get these four bolts in it right here. When I'm putting them back together, I don't really care to use a nut driver very much unless I'm just running them all down. I like putting, a, putting it back in everything by hand. That way you can kind of feel if you're over tightening. That nut driver's not gonna know if it's over tightening and yanking threads out. These in here. All right, let's get this turned around here. Let's go ahead and find the gaskets now. They sent you new gaskets with the kit. I got the old ones and they come off good. So what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna save the new ones. I'll leave these in a bag. That way if uh, working on something else, I'll have some in the stash pile. But these all come off really nice. So we're gonna repurpose the ones that came off the engine. So you slide your back gasket on. Make sure everything lines up good. And then we'll pull the insulator piece that came off. Back on. Then your back gasket. Let's see. Probably gonna put it on. Oh, that's a little dusty. I'll put it on upside down. There we go. That right. There you go. All right. Oh, so carburetor. Just like so. Now we'll come over to the stage one box kit that comes out here. Get these parts out. And we're gonna need a choke lever. I gotta go find where I stashed that. But in the back here, you'll come with your little brace that holds your choke down. I like to start this nut first. It's gonna sit in relation just like so. Well, actually it's like this. I'm trying to do everything backwards so you can see it. Like I said, this is, uh, I think this is like an eight millimeter, eight or nine millimeter. But I get the nut started, the nut, the bolt started just like so. And that's how that's gonna look. And you make sure and take your uh, outer gasket, the notch goes up for your vent. That goes on next. Oh, there's a choke lever, it's on the carburetor. So we're just gonna roll this up a little bit, slide it on the carburetor, and then you'll push this down right over the top of the lever. Then you'll come from the backside to tighten the bolt up. And you don't have to be crazy tight, just uh, good and snug. That way it keeps your choke from uh, coming up. Now we'll take two 10 millimeters. Go right inside here. Like so, I got a 10 right here. I just evenly tighten these down as you're tightening the carburetor up. Just go back and forth on them to get them good and snug. Just like so. Grab a ratchet. A little turn there. A little turn on this one. That way it evenly pulls everything down. One more time. Yeah, there we go. I'll come back later and tighten this up. I'll go get a wrench for that, but that's just gonna hold your uh, choke lever down. All right, let me just go ahead and get to this fan shroud and starter assembly. So I've got it right here. Let's move the motor back over here a little bit. I have to pull this uh, tape off. This is a, uh, when I powder coated it, this is uh, a powder coating tape I put over it. 
so it didn't get in the threads. And I thought I've already pulled it off, which I did not. I found out that uh, you really don't use masking tape because it leaves sticky stuff everywhere. But now it doesn't get any of the threads or the mechanisms that's going to catch the spring. So we're going to get some grease and let me go grab the spool right quick for that. All right, we're going to take the spool here. I just hit it with a little uh, red spray grease. Oh man, it's all over the place. There we go. Golly. All over the powder coat. Eh, it'd be fine. Put that right there. All right, get my deal unwound. Let's see. Use this has enough grease on the inside. Yeah, they already put red spray grease on the inside. But I'll just take this rope, pull it around a little bit, stick it right in this notch, and make sure the spring's good in there. Slide this down. Let's see, we need to turn yonder way till it drops down. Whenever it drops all the way down, that inside ball, so your housing will be flush with the inside of the spool. You got a spring right here on the inside, which is still stuck with all the factory grease. We'll line these two notches up that stick out right here and here in between the two starter dogs. And, uh, people call them starter dogs, starter paws, whatever you wanna call them. This will go right down inside, just like so. And we'll take a 10 millimeter, put a little pressure on it. Let's see, do I still have it lined up? Yeah. Get it started. There we go. Give it a good snug. Oh, all right, looks good. Now, let's see, we've got a hole right here. We're gonna wind this spool counterclockwise. Keep my thumb on it here while I'm turning it and keeping the rope in the notch. You want to get too much pressure on it, but if you don't have enough pressure, spring pressure, then it's not going to pull your rope all the way back in. We're going to go one. Let's see how that, that feels pretty good right there. Now I'm going to hold it with my thumb, find the end of my rope, stick it right through the hole, pull it out yonder. Then I can hold on to the rope as I let go of it, pull it just back down, and that's going to be factory. So I'll pull this out, do this fancy little uh, round your finger, Pull it, let's see, let me do it one more time so you can see how I do it. Pull it right there, grab it with your fingers, pull that through and puts a little slippy in it. That way you can put your rope on it, put your handle on it. Next, come on, get in the hole. There we go, get up there. I'll just loop this around, loop it around. Little double knot thing. Pull her through, get her snug, let that fall in the hole. That's good and tight. Then you just give it a little voila, back in business. All right, y'all like that? It's pretty cool, huh? Worked for a small engine shop for a very long time, so I fixed enough pull ropes. Learn how to do it real quick. Now we're gonna take this puppy, lean her right there on her backside. And you know what, let's go ahead and put this uh, fan housing piece on underneath here a little blower housing got it right here oh man it got dusty Woo. oh well clean it later all right we're gonna put a i think these went in it i do believe they're all the same oh it had little rubber things in it that was for that emission control stuff we don't need it had these little rubber things but i don't think we need those we'll save those for something else and we got one more right over here. We'll just drop that one. These are uh, eight millimeter. And this tab is gonna go right there. So we'll go ahead and tighten these up. Grab a ratchet. All right, now let's lay it on its backside. Go ahead and get the, I'll go over there and grab the lower housing, get that bolted up and get that put on it.
right. I think this green turned out pretty good. I like it. Need a couple screws here, bolts, screws. See the hole? There we go. Oh, almost forgot. We got to put this back piece on. I took it off and powder coated it. Whoops. No big deal. We'll just roll this around right here so I can get a screw in it there. Screw in it right there. That one goes in the bottom. So we need to get a screw in the top. Almost forgot about that. There's a screw that goes right here in this top bracket. Goes down in the hole. I think this is the right screw. Yes, sir, it is. Get my extension. It happens when you get in a hurry. Not that I'm really in a hurry. It's just hot. All right, now we can go back to putting the blower housing back on. Get in there. There we go. All right, got those two there. Go ahead and sit it down. And get two up here in the top. Coal wires out of the way. Yeah. One more over here. Alright, well the camera said it got too hot and shut down, uh, but I went ahead and got the starter on. Now we're going to go ahead and put the throttle plate on. Um, what I did is, uh, this is your normal throttle uh, plate that came off of it. I took the handle right here and I cut the handle part off of it just to try and trim it up. And I haven't decided yet whether I'm going to run my cable um, off this hole down to here, or if I might loop the cable back underneath the seat, come from the back hole down, and run it that way. Um, haven't decided yet. But what I'm gonna do now, since I have this off, is I'm gonna take the existing throttle rod that I pulled off, the factory one, and basically I'm gonna make uh, a shorter one, since we have no governor now. I'll use the same bend, and with the throttle plate off, you have the bracket that was right here where your handle used to be attached to that part. So what I'm gonna do is uh, make sure I have this, uh, put a couple bolts in it, get it where I want it, draw a little mark on the rod, and, um, Basically, put another bend, cut the rod down, put a bend in it, and I want to make sure I have all the way to uh, idle when I have everything bolted down. And I'll probably put another return spring on it somewhere because this is basically the only return spring I'll be using. So sometimes I usually put a backup one somewhere, either off the throttle rod um, is where I like to put it, like a small one, just for just in case. But what I'm gonna do now is cut this rod, get a get a shorter rod made and get this bolted down all right i took the existing throttle rod and uh, cut it up use the same part that went into the carburetor right here that uh, went back and forth and i just shortened it up put another bend in it then i put like a little slight bow in it uh, to keep the rod from bonding up so what we're gonna do is we just hook this back into the hole that's on the handle which i cut off we just hook that in there and so drop, I'm trying to keep my hands out of the way so you can see what's going on. Drop it right back into the top of the carburetor. Linkage. And then we'll go ahead and put a screw in this top one. Get this one kind of just uh, snug down. And we'll get the back one in. Just like so, kind of snug it up. Just like so. 
Now, I'll probably, uh, we'll put another return spring on it to make sure it's all the way uh, closes, but now we'll have throttle. And uh, if you're worried about this rod backing out, you can take this tab, which is uh, right here on top, take this tab, and if you just roll this tab down and get it close, that will keep this rod from ever bouncing out. Um, one I did before, I just took them and uh, put a dab of uh, epoxy right on top of this, that way your throttle rod wouldn't come out. But uh, other than that, you're back in business. So that's what we're gonna do there. Now I'm going to grab the gas tank, uh, get the gas tank on it, and uh, I think we'll be done with the motor for now. All right, I went ahead and put me a return spring on here. I uh, got that all job, got the gas tank mounted. And uh, so we need to vent the gas cap, a gas cap. We're gonna need to vent the gas tank so we're gonna repurpose some of the, uh, this emission control line stuff that was actually already on here. And uh, we're gonna recut it down. But we're gonna put a filter. This is just like an inline fuel filter. Uh, works great for a uh, tank breather. So I'm gonna get this cut. And I found another little piece I guess they had underneath here. So we're gonna try and do is uh, I'm gonna cut this and see if we can put that filter like right there. I think that'll look nice and neat. And uh, got the air filter and the sock to put on. And uh, I think we're going to call it a wrap. Need to plug up this exhaust here so nothing gets in it. So let me get that put on, get the air filter put on, and uh, I think we ought to be done for tonight. All right, we pretty much got this motor done. Do need to go back and stick something in my uh, valve cover for a breather there, which I have the hose that came off of it. So uh, I might try and find me a nice little chrome breather or something. So we'll get that taken care of. Got to get a sticker on it. I'll pull the rest of the stickers off of it. Um, I'm still debating. I'm going to see how it looks when I get it on the bike. I really like to leave the Tilson on there. Um, not sure how it's going to look with the rest of the, the paint or whatnot. We'll leave it. But uh, all the other stickers that were on it tells you to put oil in it and warning and all that. Uh, we, let, we pulled all that off. The exhaust, we're going to put that on very last. I uh, got a chain cover. It's already got bolts in it there. I got to do something a little snazzy with my kill switch. So I got that here. I'm going to take care of that at a later date. But we're going to call this a good stopping point and uh, get all this mess cleaned up. Since I got the rest of the bike sitting over there, I am still waiting on uh, a call from my seat fellow. Um, so, but in the meantime, we're going to try and get the rest of the bike mocked up. But uh, as of now, we're going to call it a day. Thank you all for watching. Y'all have a good one.